What's up guys, Mike here. Today we are finally going to be adding fish to this tank. And look guys, I could give you a million excuses as to why we don't have fish in here already, but today it's, it's all over. We're going to the fish store right now, we're picking them up, got everything pre-ordered, everything's ready for me. So let's go get them, bring them back, and finally get them into their new home. Ta-da! Isn't that crazy how fast I can go and get fish, guys? It's like almost instantaneous, it's, it's weird. But hey, look, before we put all 300 of those fish into this tank, we gotta clean this thing up because as you can tell, we got some stringy algae kinda everywhere. And I mean, look, like this tank, it's gone through a couple of phases. You haven't seen it in a long time. I look at it every day, so I don't notice, you know, how much it has changed as far as like the plant growth, the Monte Carlo on the trees here. It's crazy, like you can't even see a lot of the trees. This guy down here, like does he even have a, a, a stump? I don't know, but hey look, we gotta get some of this moss out of here. I got a big pile of it right there. There's some that floated off in the back there. We gotta collect all that up. We gotta do a little bit of pruning in here, but mainly just get rid of this algae so that our new fish, all 300, of them can go into a nice clean tank so let's go ahead and do it All right guys, so we're all done cleaning the tank for now. It's not perfect, there's still a little bit of algae here and there that slip between the cracks. The toothbrush can't get everything, I mean, unless you're in here for like three hours. But it's all good, the fish I don't think will mind too much. So you just notice all of the floating stuff in here, not a big deal, we're just gonna let that kind of get filtered out. Now let's head over and let's check out our fish. Here we have five bags with hopefully close to 60 fish in each one, so we have 300 chili rasboras here guys. We of course had to get something small to maintain the scale of the Ancient Gardens Aquarium. All the trees, I mean we couldn't have been putting fish much bigger than this in the tank or else it just kind of would have looked weird. May have already noticed that there are some Cory cats that are already in here guys. There's a couple panda quarries, they're from my buddy. They entered the tank a few weeks ago and it was just like uh, I had to put them in, you know? While these fish, you know, who knows what's going on with them, they just came from the farm. So, uh, it, not the best situation to have to put these guys in with already a few fish, but it's just a situation that we have to be in. I mean, if this tank over here was set up and ready to go, we could do a quarantine on these new fish, but it's just not something that's gonna be happening. I'll stop there guys, let's go ahead and let's add the the fish and then I have a lot to talk about regarding this tank and we can do that once we have some cool swimming action going on in this thing. All right, let's do it. We're back at the tank, guys. It's about four days later, maybe five days, six days. I, I honestly, I don't know. It's it's been a week, okay. And the reason why I waited until now is because I wanted to get through any kind of like massive fish death or whatever, so we could then talk about it. But luckily, that didn't really happen at all. Before we start talking about the tank and the fish, we got to give a huge shout out once again to Waterbox Aquariums for providing this 167 gallon amazing rimless aquarium to me here. If they weren't willing to support the channel, then this tank would not be here. I don't know what would be in its place, but it would not be nearly as cool. So go check out their website. There's a link down in the description. If you happen to be in the market for a new tank, I have a code AquaPros10. It'll get you 10% off 
any of their freshwater tanks. It's super easy to figure out what's what on their website. So yeah, go check them out, show them some love, and tell them that I sent you. I know that by just looking at the tank like this, it's hard to believe that there's 300 fish in here, but these chili rasboras are so tiny that unless they're all together, or at least in like two big groups, it really doesn't seem like there's that many in here. And you know what, that's okay to me. I'm still thinking about how many fish we can put in here. I really do wanna go get another 300 and see how that turns out, but I'm not making any decisions right now. Let's take a closer look here and scroll along the glass. The fish look all pretty good. I mean, it's impossible to inspect all 300 of them, guys, but for the most part, for the fish that I do happen to see and I can inspect, you know, I'm not seeing signs of ick or any kind of weird disease. When we first added the fish, there were a couple dead fish that entered the tank that I didn't notice. I quickly scooped those out and got them out of the equation. And, you know, so far, like I said, it's only been a week. We're looking pretty good. That doesn't mean that nothing could happen here in the next week or two, but I mean, chances are because we haven't had a massive die off, these fish will do pretty well. Let's feed these guys and see if we can't get them to group up. I just grab some of these micro pellets and then I just work them in my fingers, basically just turn as much of it into a powder as possible. And then that's the perfect size for these guys. I also like to come over to the Fritz fridge and give them some Knops D, shake it up. The encapsulated brine shrimp, decapsulated brine shrimp, how dare I? And there goes the front of my tank, man! I just cleaned the glass! That's gonna be impossible to focus on, but they love that stuff. I mean, I'm just feeding them a blend of these two things. They seem to like it pretty good. Feeding doesn't really help them get into formation or anything. At least you guys got to see right when we put them in, they had some pretty good shoaling activity because they were tripping balls. But now that they're comfortable in this tank, they pretty much just explore wherever. There's like a million of them here blending in with the substrate. I didn't even realize that. I was like, I was looking back here at where they were eating and I was just, where'd all my, f they're all down here. They're all just chilling. They blend in really well down here despite their really nice red color. There's like a million of them right here chilling. I mean, look, so stepping back at this tank, when I'm sitting on the couch way in the back of the room looking at it, it, it's still nice. Like I get the effect that I want. I see stuff moving around. So am I satisfied with this? Kind of. I think we're definitely gonna do another 300 of these guys in this tank at some point soon, but I also wanna try a few other things. It was my good friend, Rachel O'Leary. She has a YouTube channel. If, just in case you didn't know, go subscribe to her. She is an expert on these nano fish, and she said, hey, you should try the Emerald Eye Rasbora. And so, they're supposed to be a better schooling fish. I'm gonna try and get some of those in here to kind of push these dudes around a little bit maybe. Not freak them out, but just maybe that'll get these guys to show a little bit better. I don't know, we'll have to wait and find out, but I think those emerald eye rasboras are gonna be pretty cool. They're, they're subtle, you know, they're kind of like a, a clearish grayish fish if my Google images is serving me right here with a really cool eye and like some black accents on their fins and stuff. So they are a little bit bigger and I think that'll help balance things out a little bit more if there's a predominant little school of them going around the tank. I think that would look pretty good. But I don't know, let me know what you guys would put in this tank now that we have the chili rasboras. Obviously we can't put big fish in here because they'll probably get eaten. Um, so other fish ideas, they're welcome. Please send them to me down in the comments. We are gonna do some inverts in here as well and that won't be as surprising of an addition as as I might be making it say. Well, I'm not because I'm telling you that it's not gonna be um, surprising, but uh, we are gonna put something else in this tank, invert-wise, and I see some cyanobacteria, so let me deal with that. This video is getting kind of weird, guys. I've been having a little bit of cyano over on these couple of trees here. Not really sure what the deal is with that, but I'm just trying to get it loose and get it out of its area here. It seems to be kind of keeping it at bay. We'll have to do some more work on that later. So let's talk about the 10,000 things that are different about this aquarium now since the last time you've seen it and since we've added fish, okay? So the first thing you're gonna notice is that the current serene lights are different. They're no longer hanging on those three little things that they were attached to before. So I have the tall stands on this front light here and that gets it up above the water and helps illuminate more coverage in the tank. And then the one in the back is all the way basically at, you know, it's almost touching the water. And that's simply because if I lift this light up, it starts to create like some weird bands on the back of the tank. I hope I just didn't scream into the mic. And that was the issue when we had the two arms is that we got some weird color bands and it messed with 
the background light. And even when the light's not on, it would still kind of look a little weird. So because I'm not dead set on this setup, I still have the brackets left on here right where they need to be. So we can pop those back on if we want to. I also had to remove the top backlight. But with the setup right now, just the backlight at the bottom does a pretty dang good job of getting all the way up to the top of the tank. If I turn off my filming light here, you can really see how good the light spreads up the tank. The, the red and the orangish colors don't do the best job of, of going up the entire height of the tank. The colors like blue and like purple, they do a really good job of covering the entire back and I love it. I just really, for whatever reason, love the orange and so I just deal with the fact that it doesn't give as much coverage as some of the other colors of light. So a problem that I've had on this tank, guys, since the beginning was that cleaning the glass, I get a little green spot algae on there, you know how it is. The mag float that I had was the biggest one that I could find, and it wasn't strong enough to go through this three quarter inch glass. So when I was at Aquashella, I hit up the flipper booth, and if you're a reef person, you might know this company a little bit better, but they basically make a magnet cleaner that does a cool flippy trick, okay? I'll show that to you in just a second, but this is the Flipper Max, and it is more than strong enough to work on this tank for me, guys. And I'm glad to have this thing because it was not fun to have to manually scrape this whole front panel. So check this out. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. This is definitely take three, but take it off, flip it, follow it. Oh, there we go. So <laughs> it flips around and then you have this blade down here. Now that's pressed up against the glass. So now you can scrape, okay? And you can go down to the substrate. I thought this was really cool. It takes a little getting used to, but I think I'm getting better at it. So you pull it off, kind of follow it, and then it just flips around. You catch it and then you're back to doing what you were doing before. They also make some interesting kind of scrapers and some magnifying glasses. I'll show this to you some other time, guys, but just wanted to let you know that I'm playing around with these and I like them so far, but I'll keep you updated. Something that I had to do once we put the fish in was turn off the accessory pump that we have here, the Wave Maker. And that is basically because I left it on initially and like two or three fish got sucked through it and blasted across the tank. I don't know if they died. I did not see them on the other side because they shot across so fast. I freaked out, I went duh, and I turned it off. This is a current E-Flux pump. It comes with this little foam shield that you can put around it and originally I had this on it, which would make this thing totally safe. I just don't have any extras laying around. I took it off because it was getting clogged up with all the uh, dying Monte Carlo leaves kind of in the beginning of this tank's life cycle. So we'll just have to wait, get some more of those in the mail, and then we can turn that thing back on to get the flow that we wanna have in this tank. So basically we've been running here for a week with just the Awaza canister filter, the 350 Thermo, the Biomaster down here guys, and it's, I mean, it's a champ. It, I've cleaned it out one time, just popped the little sponge thing out, and it was all good. But this is something that you probably haven't seen. I don't know how well you can see this. Let me get in here. I'm using a glass inline CO2 diffuser here. You can see that it's just going like crazy through up to the output of the tank and then getting circulated. And this has helped tremendously. Before when we were just bubbling CO2 up into the current pump, it was impossible for me to get this checker to turn green. When that checker turns green, it means you have roughly 30 ppm CO2 in the aquarium, which is pretty much where you wanna have it. If not a little bit more, just depends on what's going on in your system. But with this system of diffusing CO2, I was able to get it turned green and have it be green more of the day, which is what we want. Down here at the substrate, you're gonna notice that there is quite a bit of yellowing of the dwarf hair grass. There was probably a two or three week span where I just kind of forgot what I was doing with this tank. Um, so I didn't add any furts, the nitrogen and the phosphorus and everything else probably went down to zero. I couldn't detect those two markers that I look for, nitrate and phosphate, and so I don't know how long that it went with zero, like I said, a couple weeks, but it was only until I noticed that the hair grass was yellowing out, I was like, what, what's going on? This is a little weird. Oh, duh, I haven't added fertilizer for probably almost a month. I have since gotten my act together and I've been adding fertilizers back to the tank on a weekly basis and things don't look like they're getting any worse. So I'll probably go ahead and just wrap this video up guys. Thank you so much for everything that you've allowed me to do. If you know I didn't have sponsors like Waterbox, Awaza, Current helping me get this stuff then it wouldn't be possible but I wouldn't have their support if I didn't have your support so it's just this, this whole thing having this, this journey 
Um, it's just, it's, it's crazy. I can't really put it into words. Thank you for, for allowing me to be a part of this and to do this. Maybe this isn't the video to get like all emotional uh, about this stuff, guys. But anyway, I just want to say thank you once again for everything. And I'm sorry that this took so long. Sorry that it took so long to get fish in here, but I really, I wanted to do it right and I needed to make sure that everything was just going to work. So it should, it should be good now. We're on track. So stay tuned. We have something else coming to this tank very soon and it should be pretty exciting. We'll see what happens. Thanks again so much for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.